Welcome back to Cross Stitch the Globe. I'm Stephanie. I'm Allison. And today is a very special day. It's our first tutorial and we're going to do a tutorial all about how to cross stitch on canvas because Allison is an expert. <laughs> and Al so Allison, I love how and I'll show you how. <laughs> so Allison has been cross stitched. So I, we love pro project bags. I love a project bag. Allison loves a project bag, but she cross stitches on her own canvas project bags and shows them on almost every one of our floss tubes. And people have asked and said like, oh, that's so cool. Like, how do you do that? So we figured we would just show how to do that. Now, this is the type of canvas bag that Allison likes for her projects, but this, these rules for like cross stitching on canvas could apply to like that kind of canvas bag. You can also use it on a tote. So we'll show how she does it on a, a little cute little <laughs> <Dining one>. bag. <laughs> So we'll show, um, she's gonna do one of her cross stitch project bags. Then I will show, um, and she's gonna use waste canvas. And that is like a normal, most traditional way that you get this done. Then I'm gonna show something a little bit rebellious and cross stitch a design directly onto this uh, canvas tote bag without waste canvas, just like, it's gonna be crazy. And then um, at the end, we'll talk about one other type of canvas that people like to cross stitch on, which are the big, not necessarily big, but the, the pre-stretched canvas um, that you, like art canvases art that canvases. you would use for yeah. like painting or um, that you get at like a box store that can either just be like rolled or come on like wooden frames. like frames already in there. And um, we're not gonna stitch one of those today because we don't have one, but we are gonna talk about like what the process is like and resources for if you wanna do that. Are you ready to dive in? Yeah, let's do this. Okay. So um, the first thing we want to do is how Allison do you decide, well, for your bag specifically, you have something you always do, but then if someone was going to want to cross stitch something onto a canvas bag or, um, or anything canvas, how would they decide what designs will work for them? Um, okay. So my only tips on choosing your design are going to be, um, you want something that's not stitch dense because you have to pull the waist canvas. This is if you're going to use waist yeah. canvas. You have to pull the waist canvas all the way through all of the stitches and the, the thicker it is, the harder it is to pull it out. Okay. So do something like this flower right here. See how it's not a complete like full coverage, whatever. It's just like little groups of them. So you would and not want to do a full to, coverage with waist canvas? A full coverage on waist canvas would be really difficult to get the stitching out to get the waste canvas out of. So, so we will show the waste canvas process, but basically it's something that you put over the canvas that gives you the grid, um, artificially puts a grid onto your fabric where, where it's because you're not using a fabric that has an even weave to it. So it's a different count up horizontal, vertical and horizontal. And so you're creating the grid with the waste canvas and you have to remove the waste canvas. Allison will show all of that. It looks, um, I have not done it. It looks very stressful. <laughs> no, it's really easy. It really <laughs> well, no, is. She, this is why she's doing the tutorial and I'm asking the questions. <laughs> so, okay, but for Allison's specific project bags, what do you do for your project bags? How do you pick out what design you're gonna do? Okay, so I pick a small motif from whatever project is going in that project bag. Which is such a cool idea. Do you, do you have any other ones you wanna show? Sure. She has like a whole basket of these. And the cool thing is when a project is done, then she can put the next project in and put the next motif in. So in like five years, these will have multiple motifs on them. Mm -hmm. How cute is that one? I know, I like the bells. And this is my 12 days of Christmas. Well. And if you're curious about what project she puts in these project bags, you can subscribe because every other week we put out a floss tube where we go over all of our um, like normal cross stitching. This is an extra where, where in between those, we like to do a deep dive into a topic that we don't have time to talk about during floss tube. So subscribe. Um, if you want to see what goes in those bags, cause they're very cool. Allison's been stitching for a long time. Thank you. All right. So you've designed, you've picked, you pick a motif based on what's going to go in the project bag. If someone else was going to pick a design, that was just like a design they would want to make sure that it wasn't too stitch dense so that they could remove the waste canvas. What else would they need to consider? Um, I probably would keep it relatively a small, or if you're going to do a big one, break it up. Oh, that's Don't do like, like break the, the, the canvas up into the smaller pieces of it. It'll be easier to work out. So like if you wanted to do for some reason, like a bunch of different Quaker motifs, you could just yeah. do a waste canvas for each for one. Each one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Now, uh, is there anything else someone should consider when choosing what pattern to put on their bag? Just make sure it, it fits on the, um, the, the size of your project. Okay. And how far away does it need to be? Like, if I wanted to do like as big of a design on this bag as possible, how mm -hmm. far away from the edges do I need to be? And when you're stitching in something like this, how far away do you need to be from like the seam so that you can get your needle I just, in and out? Whatever is comfortable, because if you do it too far this way, it's really just a matter of can you hold your hand in that position for that long? <laughs> but really, if as long as it's comfortable, you I could stitch right up to the edge of oh, it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I would not have thought of that. Yeah. All right. So now, what do you need to consider when picking the flosses that you're going to do that pattern with? Because today, there's like a whole world of like fancy floss. There's DMC. Yeah. What do you like to pick? Well, because um, how this fabric works is you get it damp before you take it out, and that releases. It's like a like a glue or a, there's a substance that's holding it together. And when you put the water on it, it dissolves um, so that you can pull each thread out individually. So that means whatever you're stitching has to be color safe. Okay. So um, your over dyes, I know are a problem yeah. with the color safe. So I always just use my DMC. Now, these canvas bags are pretty like easy, but they're like kind of rustic and natural looking. Um, do you do any, like, so I wouldn't be super worried about, like, these bleeding, but if yeah. someone wanted to do it in, like, a red canvas bag or something, yeah. they would need to maybe wash the canvas You would have to, read, to make I, sure read it whatever that product's yeah. uh, washing instructions are first, because, yeah, if you can't wash it, then that, don't use waste fabric on it. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, we're back. So my notes are on my phone, so that was an oversight on my part, so we have to start and stop. All right, Allison, so now we're going to talk about picking out your waste canvas because there's different counts and you've worked with different counts and then the kind I owned and have not used is different counts than even that because I think I have an 11 count at home. You have an 11 count? Yeah, because okay. I've got it off like a Facebook marketplace like okay. old lady home. Well, that would be fun to use. <laughs> it would make the stitches really, the, really big. The stitches you would be do big. a bigger pattern. Yeah. Because I'm working with the little ones. So I started with 14 count. Um, it's the most common to find um, and it, it works great but it was a little bit harder to get the um, threads out, the individual threads out, and this will make more sense when I show you how to do it. Uh, but it was harder to pull each individual thread out. So then um, I decided to get a 25 count and see if that would make it easier um, to pull out, and it does make it much easier. Because to instead of doing out. two over one, you're now doing two over two. Yes. But on a larger count. On a larger count. And then that makes the stitches look like they're a little bit smaller than an 11 count, but bigger than a 14 count. Right. Um, good, I feel like they're a good size because canvas is not, de the canvas I'm using is not delicate. So I don't want little tiny delicate stitches. I want something you can see. Do they sell waist canvas in box stores? Cause again, I've only gotten mine at, used. I've only gotten mine online. Okay. We'll link to the, so the most common counts are I think 14 and 11, but the, I think you found the 25 count on Amazon. We will. I've bought, I have bought waste cameras on Amazon. Cause I remember you sure. telling me like, I'm waiting for an Amazon package. Okay. For, so I, I believe I'll have her dig through her invoices and we'll link to wherever it is below. If it's from Amazon, it will be an affiliate link. If it's not from Amazon, it will not be an affiliate link because, um, but whichever place she bought it from, we're going to link to that specific one in the description and if you haven't used it before or if you've used 14 count and thought oh that was stiff try 25 because it really i thought it made quite a difference like it's it way easier to get yeah it was way out. easier to get them out there's more room so that's interesting okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to overhead tutorial style where you're going to see allison's magical hands at work um and talking i'm still going to be asking her the questions and then um we will you'll see our faces again in a little while all right so tell us what you did to prepare your waste canvas to get it from the package to your canvas bag okay so um i took my pattern and i counted the stitches across and it's 23 stitches by 23 stitches so then um the good thing about waste canvas is it is uh, pre-gridded so i can easily see that that's 20 and i want a couple on each side so that's my stitch count and you don't need a big margin um, because this is the final product. 
you just need enough um, to grip with your tweezers, enough space to grip and pull out each stitch. But I went ahead and I had this extra piece that was this big, so I just went ahead and used this one. All right, and then um, I want it to be as flat as I can on the canvas and as straight as I can. So I used, um, I did try and, you know, get this as straight as possible and then just use some straight pins to pin it in place. As I start going through it though, um, I will, as I work in the stitches, I'll be able to remove the pins as I go down. Um, what else? All right. Um, now, how big of a margin do you need to leave on your waist canvas between the edge of your, like let's say your design was gonna go right up against um, or let me rephrase that. How far away does the edge of your design need to be from the edge of your waist canvas? Like how many extra stitches of room do you need to leave? Um, I would give four minimum. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, and Allison's, um, I'm going to use a hoop to do my demonstration directly on the bag. Al you, Allison could theoretically use a hoop, but since she does it normally, we're just going to have her do it stitching in hand. These are so stiff that I find stitching in hand works just as well as putting it in a hoop. Putting it in a hoop is kind of cumbersome because of the zipper. But if you have a floppier bag and you're working in the middle, you could you would do a hoop. Absolutely. If it was, if it was not as um, stiff, I would use a hoop. Or you could use, if you, let's say you hated it, but like the zipper and stuff was still in the way, mm -hmm. you could use a smaller hoop. But right. you tend to use like the same six inch hoop for all things. So yes. um, there's no point in getting a hoop just for this. No. All right. And we're off. Okay. So I'm a... Uh top left hand starter so that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> so all right so Allison you ready to start your canvas mm -hmm. what kind of start so normally when you film you like to do a front loop start that's not gonna work on this canvas so what do you do are you gonna do instead um I'm gonna do I'm gonna start from the back and then just tuck in no I'm gonna do a loop start from the back some tips for when you're actually using the waist canvas? Um, well, if you're an Ada stitcher, it probably comes more naturally because it's very, very stiff. Um, so, but if that bothers you, um, don't wash it until you're ready to use it. Um, or until you're done using it because then it gets destroyed. And then, um... And I, it's, like, I probably should have used a sharper needle. Yeah. I just picked up the one I was using on my other project, but um, I normally would have grabbed, like, a 26 or a 28 um, because they seem um, to go in and out a little bit easier. Well, and also, there are, sh like, you kind of just do this for fun for each project. Yeah. But if you wanted to do like a whole project like this, there are, you might not want to use a tapestry needle. You right. Use something sharper. And I do such small motifs. Um, that doesn't bother you. Yeah. But um, canvas is different if you're not used to working on it. What happens if you accidentally pierce one of the waist canvas strings? Okay, so then it's um, impossible to pull out. So don't do that. <laughs> so don't do that. So don't do that. Um, I have done that before, and I had to actually go find the snag, the one that I had, and um, clip it. From the back? From the, yeah. Clip, well, clip the actual oh, so it's still thing from the, the front. It's still in the project? Yeah, because you can't get it out. Sorry, it's a little bit harder to see. Because of the camera? Because of the, yeah, it's farther from my face. Well, and because everything else she's Allison. So Allison started making these really cool reels on her Instagram. You should go follow her. She's Allison in the moment. 
um, she has started putting out these really pretty reels because she got a stand or she's been using a stand. And so, um, she can do that, but you need to, to be able, like, if you're going to use a stand, you have to attach your project to something. And since she's stitching this in hand, uh, she can't. And so she's, she's used to having like these really beautiful <laughs> stitching videos. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it's too. It's further away from my face, so I can't. That was there. Yeah. Oh, well, I missed a stitch, and it's really hard if you miss a stitch in oh, canvas. Me. Yeah. How do you? So, wh what's making it hard? Do you think is it the canvas or the the canvas? The waist canvas. It's the canvas. So can't, it's confusing because the waist canvas is the material you put on to anything to stitch it. But then the material we're talking about stitching on is canvas. So there's two canvas. Yeah. <laughs> so then this goes. The good, I mean, there are perks to it being so stiff. Because then um, my stitches are going to lay flatter and straighter um, after I take out the waste canvas because it's taut. Um, but it does take a little bit more effort. Okay, so now we're going to speed it up for you guys. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> We did change it from a Quaker design to like a little cute party design um, because we decided that it was going to take too long to stitch the Quaker design. We didn't want to sit here. So this is so cute. It's right. cute. The other one was cute. It just would, we'd still be here for a while. Yeah. Cause it's like, oh yeah, it would, you still have to stop and stitch 200 stitches. Yeah. yeah so. But this one is so cute. It's very cute. Um, all right. So now what do you do? So your stitching's on there, now what do you do? Okay, well we've changed the design, so I'm just gonna trim it up. Um, so I'm gonna cut this off because we don't need that much um, length on there. But normally so. you wouldn't need to do that. But normally you know. it would be cut to size and you would just yeah. uh, start the next step. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim this up. And, um, what you're gonna need is a damp uh, cloth. That's pretty. That's pretty damp. Not soaked, but pretty, pretty good. Right, do you want me to go get one? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Uh, here. Just get it a little bit damp. What you what you want is enough um, so that it kind of soaks through the top of the fabric, like the waist fabric, but it doesn't need, you don't need to drench it. You don't need to drown the stitches in water. Yeah. 
Yeah, just like get it wet and then wring it out. So we'll see if this passes the test. Okay, so yeah. So like it's, she got it wet and then wring it out and that's what it feels like. And then you just press it against your stitches and you're dampening the, what you're doing is you're releasing the glue um, with just that little bit of water, you're just releasing the glue. And this is why it needs to be color safe because <laughs> if you had these beautiful over dyes that you didn't know what was gonna happen, this might be scary. Blended, like if you have like a really pretty red or blue canvas bag, you need to make sure that. So see, it's this damp. Is it gonna rub off? Right, you don't want to ruin whatever um, your finished object is. Okay, all right. So then you take your tweezers, pair of tweezers. Oops. Buzz. There we go. And what you're doing is you're gonna pull out you one. Need to back a little bit. Oh. Down, yeah. There we go. Right there. Okay, so you are literally taking yeah. out each thread of this one by one. And I go. I kind of work both directions. Um, I take some from the this side and then some from that side. And then when it gets to the stitching part. Hold your horses. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the part where it's interesting. So you're working this out from underneath all the stitches. One by one. Get them out. Don't try and pull more than one at a time because it'll catch it. It'll get caught. And this is the part where we said do not pierce it because if your if your thread is in the middle of one of these it will not pull out. Is it easier to pull from the short way or the long way when it's I feel like it's the short the short way it comes out quicker. This is why and I'll, so if you had a really dense stitch stitch patch it would you need to pull it through that whole patch of stitches whereas i'm just gonna pull i'm just pulling it through you know four stitches tops i still think for a design that we made up on the fly because we had to change it because we decided we didn't want to sit here through a whole on order episode <laughs> while you stitched uh, this pattern is super cute it is cute <laughs> Kind of makes me want to put like a party hat under it. I know. It. Well, it helps that you've been stitching uh, Satsuma Street all day, so we had beautiful colors. Yes. Out already. The inspiration was there. Is it too high? Uh, no. Okay. All right. So now we're going to speed up the process of pulling these out. All right, Allison, it looks so good. Thanks. And that's all you do. And <laughs> these little fibers are such a pain. <laughs> See, you literally like pulled apart an entire thing of fabric. <laughs> But it looks good. It looks good. See? All the stitching came oh, out. That's so cute. It looks like you're having a little mouse party. Yeah. Oh my god, how cute would that be? A little tiny mouse. And that is stitching with waste canvas on canvas. Yay. <laughs> All right, Allison. So you finished your canvas bag. Look at that little design. You've taken the waste canvas out. And then before you start using it, do you do anything between that step and your using it step? No, um, because I'm just gonna put a project in here and it's just gonna sit and not get it. It's not gonna get any wear and tear on that, like on the inside. But if you were, see how the- Like if this is for like a purse or something. Yeah, you might, I might line the bag 
if I was gonna use it like just like face. iron on some some interfacing. Yeah, like, like you know how that. like in like embroidery and stuff on sweaters they'll have it, but just on the design. Yeah, itself? yeah, yeah, something to protect the back yeah. stitches. Yeah, but since it's just gonna be a project bag, so I'm just gonna use it as is. All right, it's done. <laughs> now we still have two more types of cross stitching on canvas to talk about. But if you have any questions for Allison about the process of her making her canvas bags for her uh, cross stitch or anything specific about the waist canvas, definitely leave them in the comments. Um, we should be happy to answer them on our yeah. next floss tube and subscribe to our floss tube um, so you can see all the projects you put in that bag in the future. All right, now we're going to talk about um, cross stitching just directly onto like a canvas tote. A um, couple things to see. So this isn't something that like I've seen people do, but I know it can be done. But I was inspired by um, KBH Stitches because she bought this Osnerberg fabric and I showed you what she did with it, which is, um, and I think she got the idea from Not Forgotten Farm, which is um, Osnerberg fabric is a type of fabric that is like cotton. It's very rustic. It has like still has the cotton seeds in it and it's not an even weave. And this kind of has a similar feel because you can see like some of the cotton seeds in there, especially the wick. And it's, um, this is just like a 100% natural cotton canvas tote. Um, but this one's also very like, like, um, thin, flimsy. thin, flimsy, you can see through it. It's, uh, not going to break your needle theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, and she's been stitching on this Osnerberg fabric and it's like, okay, so I've been thinking in my head too, like, you can stitch on things without waist canvas that aren't even weaves if you are either one okay with them being like not square X's, them being rectangular X's that are either tall or long, depending on which way your fabric, the count of your fabric goes. Um, or if you could eyeball, if you were somebody who could eyeball how big a stitch is and be very consistent, just like when you sew like a hem, you need to know how long you're like, not need to know, but you need to have consistent like stitches so because it's not like people who sew have like gridded perfectly gridded stuff so um that's what inspired me uh and then you sh you showed me the bag you got for today and i was like oh the holes on this are fairly big i mean i don't know if you can see them but the holes it's a very see-through bag and the holes are very like big but the count is still pretty high so i estimated the count as best i could and it kind of looks like it's a 40 count each direction, but it's not like a true 40. Like it might be 42 by 40 or whatever. Some of the other fabrics I've seen people do this kind of stitching on um, have been like 30 by 40 or like 31 by 42 or so big difference. like where you, where you want to know. So before you get started on doing something like this, figure out what your count is. And if you can either, and I didn't bring my magnifiers over today. As I didn't know I was going to be stitching on a 40 count today. So um, some of this stuff would be easier if I had like a better way to see it. But you could either count, literally count, or what I did was I stitched a row um, that was a quarter stitch across and then estimated because that was like good enough. And what I figured out where the stitches were like almost but not exactly square, but because the 40 count, they're so tiny that it's fine. You're okay with it. Yeah. Um, and I'm just gonna stitch the same design that Allison stitched just so you can see the two comparatively. But because that design doesn't make that tiny design doesn't make any sense on like a big tote bag. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the back to secure it to make it a little bit easier to um, rip out later when I do figure out what beautiful design I want to put on here. Mm -hmm. And also like if you don't want to stitch on 40 count then you might still want to take a waist canvas because you might want to make it a different count. Right. Um, I also experimented with doing, so I'm going to do it one over two, experimenting with doing it two over four and it was too tight. Um, but one over four, the stitches would be kind of big. It would just look not super co like covered. The coverage wouldn't be great, but that would be a really interesting look for a tote bag too. So it doesn't just, if your count is high, it doesn't mean that your stitches have to be tiny. It just means you like, this is not traditional cross stitch. You need to play around with like how many threads and how many, um, like how many threads are going to use, how many threads are you going to go over. And then also you're not in control when you pick the object. So you kind of need to conform your design threads and idea to the object, not the other way around. Um, you could, um, I'm going to use a 20, size 28 needle because it's the equivalent of a 40 count. I think you could use a bigger needle and then you'd be fine. I tested it with a 24 and it was fine, but just like a little bit weird. Um, 
but if you have a like this is such a flimsy canvas tote that this is fine I've already stitched in it to count it and I know um but uh like a really thick canvas tote like a Land's End style like canvas bag you probably want to get a tap like not a tapestry not like a, a needle like a sewing needle yeah or like mm -hmm. I think they even have like canvas there's, there's another kind of needle that's sharper and bigger but yeah then you would it would go from like a, a traditional cross stitch on a 40 count feel to like a whole different yeah. like higher so you want to get so yeah so match your needle your design your floss to the project but then also everything about color fastness uh Same. still applies so, so um you're not going to pull out the waste canvas so you're not going to have to wash it but it's a real world object that is going to get washed so you it's not going to sit in a pretty frame so you want it to be like real world waterproof so, all right, I'm going oh, to stitch this on the stand. I've never used the stand before. I'm stitching on a 40 count without my magnifiers. Like, lots of caveats about, like, what my stitching process looks like. So, just, like, be kind about that because, like... We're all going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all see you in a minute. All right, so I already talked about counts and everything. Um, and, like, we talked about how to put your design in. Uh, this is just a demo. I'm not going to keep this design on this bag because this design is not going to be large enough for this bag. I'm just going to design the exact... I'm going to stitch exactly what Allison stitched. Um, so, and it's... Normally, when I stitch with 40 count, I need magnifiers even with lots of light. So, it's going to be a little bit tough for me to see because I didn't bring my magnifiers. No, that doesn't work because my glasses are already, yeah, like are already um, transitioned. So they're, my, gla my glasses have, are um, progressives that are already stronger than your reading glasses. Um, I just have eye problems. <laughs> there we go. So these stitches, stitches should be very cute and tiny. And like I said earlier, I estimated that this is about a 40 count each way, but it's not going to be exact. It's not an even weave and it might be 42 count. It might be 38 count. It's not really, I don't 100% know. Once I do this design, I'd be able to measure it again and get a more precise idea of what the count is. But so far it really is just like stitching on regular 40 count except that you have to be more cognizant of what the design is going to be just like with um your thing that you your project bag that you were working on the stitches are going to get rubbed so right, yeah we'll talk more about that later and then um well these stitches will get rubbed because these stitches will be removed but whatever i do end up putting on here will get rubbed now you could use like non-color safe if you were stitching directly on it and skipping the waist fabric but you would still be cognizant of whatever you're finished if you're gonna ever wash or get your finished product wet yeah it, that just seems dangerous when you're talking about real world objects as opposed to things in frames but i and i know some people take fin un finished and unfinished um cross stitch and put it on project bags all the time my, I don't beat my my project bags up though because most of them do not leave my house. The ones that do leave my house, like yeah, come here or go to Starbucks or something. Like I'm not, um, so I don't really think about like how other than like how beautiful they are. Like once they can hold something, they kind of are serving their their purpose. I keep counting three instead of two because these stitches are tiny. Um. Something you could do if you don't want to, if you have something like, so you're not going to be, it's not like you can order a can like a canvas tote bag that is the right count that you want. So if it's, okay. So something you could do if you want bigger stitches than this is you could do it uh, one over four. I tried doing two over four and, um, Aside from the fact that I was having a hard time counting over four with such small threads, like I have an error right now, I'm just gonna leave it in the design, but um, the top half of that stitch is over three. So I'm just gonna stitch over it and pretend like it didn't happen. But um, you could do one over four and as long as the coverage is right, like you just, I don't think you can be picky about what 
the final product is going to be, I think you have to take the object that you're trying to stitch on and match to it. Yeah. Just like, um, and I have a feeling that that is probably what happened more in the past than because they probably didn't have a lot of times what they were probably embroidering and stitching probably wasn't even weaves. Like if you were just like a farm girl with a wanting to make like like your home beautiful, like some of your materials, you were probably stitching on materials that were the materials you would have in your life and not the other way, not bringing things in that were good for stitching. Whereas, like, you know, a lot of the, like, reproduction samplers are based on things girls stitched in school, you know, under, like, much more ideal circumstances. Mm -hmm. If I missed a stitch, no, I didn't. Like, if I have a little half stitch somewhere, no, I didn't. This is very tiny for my eyes. I do really like stitch on a 40 count, but I could never only stitch on it. All right, so we're gonna, now that you guys are seeing, like I actually am stitching on this directly, we're gonna speed up the video so you don't have to sit there and listen to us chit chat. <laughs> show my design now you guys might have seen it and I had to take it off because I pulled out a thread and I couldn't see it through the um I couldn't like see the back to fix it but uh that is my design stitch now see how the stitches actually look kind of like traditional cross stitches I've seen people stitch on real fabric where it's like just much taller or whatever oh, yeah. so now do you want to compare what it looks like at a 40 count direct with a 25 count waist canvas look quite different this was a small design to begin with and then we made it even smaller but it really would not have worked to sit around and stitch the big yeah. just bigger design not big but like the the quaker the quaker, quaker design that we picked out but look <laughs> how cute are they Very cute. now <laughs> i'm not gonna allison's bag is done she's gonna use the project yeah, back with fun. this motif <laughs> because she adds motifs every time she puts a new project in. Yeah. But I'm not going to walk around with a grocery bag that just has this design on it. Or should I? Should, no. is, is this a finished object? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. But um, I could extend what's it out. What's in your heart, Stephanie? <laughs> well, what's in my heart is I have a lot of wits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I may in the future pull, the, I probably will pull these stitches out in the future and stitch something else on it. But yeah. Uh, in terms of the process of stitching directly on it, it totally worked. It worked, yeah. Um, and the back of my stitches look insane because you can see I wasn't securing it because I did think I was going to rip it out. So I, and I am not 
like used to stitching on. Allison has been stitching on that stand for practice. I have not stitched on a stand ever before, even though the, it is actually my stand, it's but <laughs> um, I never used it because I didn't have room for it and then I yeah. just lent it to you. So, it it so, takes a, a bit to get used to. It took a lot to use. Yeah. So the backs of my stitches look insane. Like, just like <laughs> truly insane. But that um, has nothing to do with this process. But you wouldn't want to leave like this insane craziness in the back for, and then like be putting stuff in. So you would definitely want to protect this with like an iron-on interfacing or yeah. something. So those are two um, ways that you can stitch cross stitch on canvas using waist canvas and use good driving directly on the canvas as long as you know the count and then or can figure it out can, yeah can configure around it or if you don't know the count but you're kind of cool with like figuring it out as you go but um there's one other type of canvas that people might want to stitch on and that is the like art canvas that's usually people think of as like paint for painting or drawing and that you find in like box stores. So we have not done this kind of canvas stitching, but so I'm, cool. it looks really cool. And there's a website that we're going to link to called Crafty Nest. And she has a DIY article about her process where she printed out a pattern and then cross stitched. But instead of um, using waste canvas to like create a grid, she created the grid on like on a pattern that she put the pattern directly on there. It's like a very cool process. But her stitches are like made with yarn and are one inch squares. And so that was a lot of materials for us to be like experimenting with when she already did it and she did it really good. So it is totally possible. It looks super cool. Um, but you want to check out the Crafty Nest tutorial on it, which again, we'll put in the description. So if there's any other kind of canvas that you're interested in figuring out how to cross stitch on that doesn't meet one of these three methods um let us know and we're totally down to play with it and figure things out um i I've, I've enjoyed the process of of doing these little motifs I mean, that's so cute hey, thanks got threads freaking everywhere well yeah <laughs> but like um i think my next thing is going to be matching notion bags with project bags that's super cute i know i can't believe it <laughs> I was like, I know. I know. So, yeah. But, um, so I've had a lot of practice. I didn't know you had these even. I haven't yeah. seen. Did you just do this? No. That's very good. Last month. That would be even harder to, like, stitch in. It's actually the same. It feels the same. Because you guys saw with this, I was able to put it on, like, a hoop. Um, I just had to work around the, like, handles and yeah. stuff. Yeah. This is, it's so stiff, though. Can you... Yeah. Just holding it. Oh, I did break my needle, but I broke my needle trying to get, um, to fix some issue like <laughs> that had to do with the fact that I can't stitch on a stand without seeing the back yet. Yeah. Um, not, it, it's not the actual, it's hard to do. not this flimsy little bag, but yeah. I mean, like I have an L bean canvas tote and I'm like, if I were to try to cross stitch on something that thick, I would just need a whole you would different, need, yeah. Different, and there's a name for that kind yeah. of needle and I can't remember what it is. Um, but yeah, let us know if you have any questions, if you've done any projects of your own on Canvas, we'd love to see it. You can leave links to YouTube videos or Instagram posts with those in there, or just tell us about your experience. Yeah. And then, um, you know, if you are a returning viewer who wanted to watch this crazy adventure Allison has been on, thank you. And if you're new, please subscribe, um, so that you can see all of our updates and future tutorials. We definitely think we're going to do more. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to say, well, obviously like the video. Oh, if you got to this point in the video, leave a little needle symbol so okay. we know that's our secret language. All right. Um, thank you guys so much and, uh, bye. Bye.